Welcome to Las Vegas and welcome to the win everybody. I am beyond excited to be here after seeing so many of my favorite vloggers play tournaments and cash games in this iconic poker room. We're here to play a 100k guaranteed tournament as part of their signature series. The buy-in is $400 for a starting stack of $25,000. let us get to it. Here we go. In the very first hand, we look down at a7 offsuit in the big blind facing a raise from the under the gun one player. Action folds around to us and we call. We go heads up to the flop and uh, it's a pretty good flop for us. Ace, seven, ace with two hearts. We flop the stone cold nuts. We check to the original razor and they make a continuation bet of 200, which is pretty standard on a pair board that is very likely to have missed us. We're obviously not going anywhere, we call. The turn is the jack of spades putting a second flush draw on the board. We could make a case for taking the betting lead and start building up the pot, but since it's unlikely our opponent has a strong hand, we'd rather give them a chance to continue betting on this card that favors their range more than ours. We check, and unfortunately, our opponent checks back. The river is the eight of spades, and we're not going to check this river as we do not want our opponent to check back. We decide to bet 1500, slightly over pot, and our opponent goes into the tank. We try to hide our excitement as we see them reach for more chips and raise to 6800. At this point, we go for a very advanced move, it's very out of line, and I wouldn't recommend you try this at home. But this is a great spot for us to balance our folding range by folding some very strong hands like the second or third nuts. By doing this, we confuse our opponents and become a lot less predictable to play against. So we go ahead and actually make the fold here. I know what you're thinking, what the fuck is this guy doing? Again, this is a very non-standard out of line play, but I believe it will reap massive benefits later down the line in the tournament. On to the next hand. Psych! Of course we didn't fold. We 3-bet jammed all in, and after tanking for a little while, our opponent folded, claiming to have folded pocket 8s, which makes sense the way the hand was played, and what a sick fold. I'm not sure I would have been able to make that fold, so props to them. Did you fall for that? Did you really think I folded? Hit the like button if you did, I'll give you a second. Just smash that like button right now. Thank you, I really appreciate it. Let's move on to the next hand. In this hand, we pick up jacking... Oh, you know what? I already made that joke in my last video, so let's keep it professional this time around. We pick up king jack off suit in the hijack and action folds to us. We race to 600 and get called by the button and the small blind. We go three ways to a flop of three, queen, three with two clubs. The small blind checks, and just like our opponent in the previous hand, we make a standard continuation bet on this paired board which is likely to have missed our opponents. That likeliness decreases rapidly though, as both the button and the small blind make the call. Three ways to the turn which comes the eight of spades. The small blind checks again, and with both players calling our flop bet, we decide it's time to slow down. We check, and the button checks back. The river is great for us, it's the king of hearts, improving us to top pair with a decent kicker on a very dry board. The small blind leads this time for 1500. We were slightly concerned that they could be holding a 3, but with this bet size we only need to win the hand about 20% of the time to make the call, so it's a pretty easy decision. We make the call, the button folds, and our opponent shows queen 7. Looks like they value cut themselves a little bit there, we got lucky on the river, and we'll gladly take this pot down. Things are off to a good start, and now we peel Queen Jack offsuit in the small blind. We see an open to 600 from the cutoff, who has been pretty active at this table so far, and we have an easy defend here, so we make the call. We go heads up to a flop of 8 ace 9 rainbow. We check, and the cutoff C bets for 500. We decide to call here with our gutshot straight draw and the intention to possibly steal the pot on later streets. The turn is the king of spades, and with this card, we pretty much decide to give up if we face a bet from our opponent, as there are now two cards on the board that strongly connect with their preflop raising range. We check, the cutoff bet's 1000, and we fold. We go card dead for a couple of levels when we look down at ace 8 offsuit in the big blind, and the very active player opens up the action to 1000. Perhaps a little bit tilted, perhaps a little bit impatient, we decide to take a stand here and 3 bet to 3500 hoping to take the spot down preflop and regain some momentum. That doesn't happen as the button makes the call and we head to a flop of 10-9 queen rainbow. A pretty decent flop for us we suppose. We really want to take the spot down at this point so we make a pretty large continuation bet of 6000. Not really liking the sizing as we wouldn't be betting this large if we had a very strong holding and we like it even less when the button smooth calls. 
With close to 20,000 in the pot and just over 16,000 in our stack, we go to the turn which is the three of spades and we come to the decision point in this hand. Do we want to commit to our story and go all in or do we wave the white flag and give up? As mentioned before, this player seemed very active and we saw them get pretty sticky against other players. So for this reason, we went with the second option. We checked, our opponent bet 10,000 and we let our hand go. We're a little bit annoyed to have dumped a third of our stack, but we get over it pretty quickly as we pick up pocket queens in the small blind on the very next hand. We see an open from the cutoff, the button calls, and we bump up the action to 3200. The cutoff folds and the button 4 bets all in and they have us covered. A little bit curious to see them flat the original open and then reshove on top of our 3 bet, but we're just never folding queens in this spot. We make the call and they show ace king offsuit. It's the most classic flip in poker, pocket queens versus ace king. Let's head to a showdown and hope we come out on the winning end of this one. The flop is a clean 5-6-2 with two spades. The turn is a three of spades, which gives us a flush draw, but also gives our opponent a straight draw. We now need to dodge a non-spade ace, king, or four to double up. The river is a seven of diamonds, and we are back to just above starting stack. We pick up a couple of pots pre-flop before we look down at ace-queen offsuit in the low jack. We see an open from the active player to 1500 from under the gun. We go for a three bet in position to 4500 and once again, they call. We go heads up to a flop of seven queen seven with two hearts. Under the gun checks to us and with top pair top kicker, we could go either way with a continuation bet or a check to protect our checking range. But seeing how this player seemed pretty sticky and with a flush draw on board, we decided to go with a c-bet of 3200 which the under the gun player calls. The turn is a beautiful ace of spades giving us top two pair and the under the gun player checks to us again. At this point we want to pile as many of our chips into this pot as possible and set ourselves up for a river shove so we bet 10,500. Surprisingly the under the gun player who covers us check raises all in. Now as sticky as this player may have been they're taking the aggressive route here and when a player who usually calls raises, it's never a good sign. We don't see what we're losing to though, as we block queens, we block aces, which they would have probably re-raised preflop. Could they really be holding a seven? It seems more likely that they're holding some kind of big ace and flush draw combo like ace king, ace jack, ace ten of hearts or spades maybe? In any case, we have to call 16,000 in a pot of over 53,000, which means we only have to win about a third of the time to make this a profitable call, and top two pair is still a super strong holding on this board. We make the call, and our opponent shows us the bad news. They have pocket queens, and we are in terrible shape. Our only hope is to hit the case ace on the river, but it's an inconsequential three, and we are out of the tournament. That being said, we came with the intention of firing two bullets if necessary, so we head to the registration desk and buy in once again, and funnily enough, we draw the same table, and we now find ourselves sitting right next to our executioner. She actually turned out to be a really nice lady from South Dakota named Lisa, who watches almost every poker vlogger out there. So Lisa, if you're watching this, shout out to you, and thanks for supporting the poker vlogging community. First hand we get involved in on bullet number two, we pick up pocket kings in the under the gun one position. We see a limb from under the gun player before we open up the action to 2000. Action falls back around to under the gun and they make the call. Heads up to a flop of 962 with two diamonds. Under the gun player checks and we throw out a continuation bet of 2000 and they make the call. The turn is a seven of hearts. Under the gun checks to us once again. We size up to 7,000 now, but sadly, we lose our customer as they fold. In this next hand, we peel ace-queen suited on the button. We see an open from under the gun to 2,200. Action folds around to us, and we make it 6,000 to go. The under the gun player comes along. They check in the dark as we head to a flop of eight, ace, five with two spades. With two spades on the board and not having a spade in our hand, we size up our c bet to 7500 and the under the gun player check raises us all in. We once again fight ourselves with our tournament life at risk with the ace queen. This check raise comes from another very active player at this table who's been involved in a lot of pots and with this being our second and last bullet, we are sweating this decision. We could be losing to a slow played ace king or a set, but these are really the only hands we are afraid of. 
They could be doing this with a worse ace or a spade draw, which we unblock. Still not a very comfortable spot, but we ultimately decided on a call, and we're relieved to see we're not beat, but we're not winning either, as they show ace queen as well with the queen of spades. No runner runner spades on the turn or river, and we chop the blinds and ante. Next hand we get involved in, we look down at pocket queens from the cutoff, and there's a raise to 1800 from under the gun. Action folds around to us, and we three bet to 5200. The under the gun player makes the call while saying, We go heads up to the flop, which we don't love. It's ace, 10, 10 with two clubs. But when the under the gun player checks to us, we decide to take advantage of their read and make a continuation bet of 5200, and they fold. In theory, this is probably a board on which we should check back, but we're at a point of the tournament where every pop matters, so we seized the opportunity and thankfully it worked out for us. In the following hand, we pick up King Jack offsuit in middle position. Action folds around to us, we min raise to 1600 and both the button and big blind come along. Three ways to a flop of queen, eight, nine with two hearts. The big blind checks to us and in a three way pot, we could and should probably check here, especially since we flopped the gut shot straight draw, but instead we went with a continuation bet of 2100. The button folds, but the big blind check raises to 7700. This is the same player from the chop with ace queen, and last time the check raised us, they had top pair. We reluctantly make the fold, and this is a good reminder that you do not have to c-bet every time, especially when facing tricky players who like to check raise. If you c-bet too often, your opponents are bound to notice and punish you for it. Next hand we look down at pocket jiggities and a cutoff, and we see an open from the low jack to 3000. We're going to 3-bet here, and with our stack of roughly 25 big blinds, even though it's a bit of a big raise, I think our best move is just to go all in, so that's what we do. We shove, and the button calls for less. The low jack gets out of the way, and we go heads up to a showdown against the button player who shows ace queen. The dealer is clearly feeling the gravity of the moment as they deal the entire board from the first burn to the river in less than three seconds. So fast that my phone can't even focus on the cards. I'm looking through my screen and I see a couple of pink cards and, ah uh, yep, there's a queen. We lose a big one here and we are now down to 10 big blinds. Literally the very next shuffle, we get dealt ace-king suited in the hijack and even better, the low jack opens up the action to 2500. We do our best impression of a tilt all in, it folds back around to the low jack and they make the call. We're in a great spot to double up as they show ace-queen offsuit, let's go to a showdown. We hold up and pick up some much needed chips. In the following level, with about 13 big blinds in our stack, we look down at ace-4 offsuit in the cutoff, and when action falls to us, we decided to go all in. In retrospect, I think it would have been fine to just fold. I'm accustomed to playing more turbo-style events with 20 of 25-minute levels, and I think with 13 bigs and these longer levels, ace-4 is just a fold. Nevertheless, we went with the all-in, and we almost got it through if it wasn't for the short stack small blind, who makes the call with pocket fives. To the showdown we go. Things are looking pretty dire when our opponent flops a set. The turn, however, brings us a gut shot straight draw. We have four outs to win. Come on, we've hit two outers recently, so we should be able to hit a four outer, right? Nope, we don't. And to add insult to injury, we hit our ace on the river, but it's no good. And we are now down to five big blinds and on life support. A few hands later, we pick up ace 10 offsuit in the under the gun one position. The end of the gun player limps, and with five big blinds in our stack, we don't really have any option but to stick it in. That's what she said. So we shove. The hijack calls, the small blind calls, the big blind calls, what the hell is the under the gun player calls, oh man, we have to beat four players? Well, I guess we can start packing. Let's watch the hand unfold, shall we? The flop comes 7-3 jack with two spades, and the hijack bets 16,000. Oh, by the way. Did I mention the player in the hijack seat is Kenna James? If you watched poker on TV during the golden age of poker, then you surely saw Kenna James. He was actually seated to our direct left on our first bullet. We talked and he was an absolute gentleman. Such a cool experience to sit next to such a legend of poker. But I digress. Let's go back to the action. Okay, so Kenna bets 16,000, which is looking pretty bad for us. The rest of the table folds. Let's see what we're up against. 
Just tell me you better flush draw, Kenna. Oh, oh my god. Spades are no good. Can't, oh. Oh! Oh! Wow. What a sick, sick, sick suck out. We don't double up. We don't triple up. We don't quadruple up. Ladies and gentlemen, we quintuple up almost back to a starting stack. It was so surreal seeing a poker legend stare at the board in disbelief. This hand alone will make this day one that I won't forget anytime soon. I guess the only thing that could have made it better is if it was Phil Helmuth in the seat and not Kenna. But it is what it is. Wow. Kenna, thanks for being an amazing guy and a great ambassador for poker. It was an honor to be at your table. All right, back to the action. In the next level, we look down at Ace King suited in the hijack. Under the gun player limps, and we'd love to see the under the gun one player raise it up to 4,900. With 20 big blinds in our stack, we have the easiest three bet shove in the world. Under the gun player folds, and the under the gun one player calls. They show Ace 10 offsuit. We're in a great spot to double up and have a fighting chance in this tournament. Let's go to a showdown. The flop comes four, deuce, six, all hearts. Hello! We have our opponent flopped completely dead. I believe they are about negative 82% to win at this point, and we pick up a massive pot. We now have the biggest stack we've ever had in this tournament. Let's freaking go. Our opponent in this hand was a super friendly guy from Tempa called Greg, and we traded a number of pots with him. He made a number of appearances in this vlog, and he's since subscribed to the channel. Greg, if you watch this video, I got the better of you in this particular hand, but you were a formidable opponent Shout out to you and hope we get to play again soon. After finally building up a nice stack, we unfortunately go card dead and we are now late into day one, but still a long way from the money when we pick up pocket tens on the button. We see an open to 3500 from the under the gun player and action folds to us. We're obviously not folding and with 23 big blinds in our stack, I suppose we could go either way between a call and a three bet all in. Again, with the longest structure, we probably could afford to simply call and either hit our set or move on to the next hand, but we go with the other option, we shove, and the under the gun player who has us covered snap calls with the ace queen offsuit. Once again, we're off to a classic race, let's go to a showdown. The flop is a safe looking 6-8-9 with two spades, the turn is a queen, no! We do have a double gut shot, can we hit a jack, 10 or 7? Nope, it's the bricks of bricks, the two of clubs, and just like that, we are out. Did I overplay my pocket tens? Was I ever getting a fold from the undergun player? Should I have been more patient? Would I be asking myself this question if I won the hand and was sitting on the monster stack? Let me know what you guys think in the comments.